We are joined now by Muin Rabani. He's an analyst specializing in Palestinian affairs and the Arab-Israeli conflict. He's also the co-editor of the e-magazine Jadalia, and he's live for us from Montreal. Thank you very much for your time. Um, what do you make of this raid into Gaza's largest hospital? What do you think the Israelis are trying to achieve here? They've said that they are targeting Hamas operatives. They're asking Hamas operatives inside the hospital to surrender. But they have never provided any evidence that Hamas operates from this or any other hospital in Gaza? Well, to be fair to the Israelis, they did provide evidence yesterday um, when they um, seized the Rantisi Children's Hospital, and they provided us um, with images of a toilet and images of children's toys, um, which they explained to us as proof positive that this hospital was functioning not only as a Hamas command post, but also as a place where captives and hostages were kept. But and what, is, what, what is it about the children's toilet and the children's um, toys, rather, which show that Hamas was using the hospital? Absolutely nothing. Um, and, and that's my point, because then they later showed us a calendar on which was inscribed in Arabic the names of the days of the week and nothing else. And um, we were supposed to believe that this was a schedule with the names of guards and um, the times that they would be guarding their captives. So it's it's a complete charade. Regarding Al Shifa Hospital, I think the important thing to recognize is that the Israeli authorities over the years, and particularly during the past month, have elevated its status to something akin to a Palestinian Pentagon. Again with absolutely no evidence and refusing any efforts at um, independent examination of their claims. And therefore, I think that by seizing this hospital and given um, uh, the paltry results of their military offensive uh, more generally, at least if we're talking about the uh, impact it's had mm -hmm. on the leadership of Hamas. You know, they're trying to um, have some kind of Iwo Jima moment where uh, they can um, uh, declare victory. And then assuming that they'll be the only ones in charge of these grounds, they can, as they did in the Rantisi Children's Hospital, yeah. simply make stuff up, plant um, evidence and so on. And, and you're calling this a charade, but it's if it is a charade, it's an incredibly dangerous charade, is it not? Given the thousands of civilians, Palestinian civilians, who are sheltering the many hundreds of patients, including some 35 premature babies who've already been taken out of incubators because the hospital doesn't have enough fuel to support those incubators. And three have lost their lives oh. because of that. Yes, well, it's an incredibly dangerous charade for two reasons. The first reason is um, uh, the horrific humanitarian consequences that, that you've just identified. The second um, reason, which I think has broader uh, significance, is that the sanctity of medical facilities has been foundational to the rules of warfare since ancient times. And despite uh, violations uh, over the centuries, um, and more recently by the Israelis, that sanctity has survived. But I think that Israel's systematic assaults on each and every Palestinian hospital, clinic, and medical facility over the past month has destroyed mm -hmm. a principle um, embedded in the laws and rules of warfare since time immemorial. And, you know, others will now uh, feel free to uh, to behave similarly. And the, the timing of this ground raid into Gaza's largest hospital is very interesting, isn't it? Because it comes just a few hours after the Israeli military spokesperson said that Gaza's hospitals are legitimate targets. And it also comes, as we've been reporting, just a few hours after the US national security spokesperson said that they have their own, that their own intelligence that Hamas is using this hospital to carry out its operations, again, without providing providing any of that evidence. Yes. Well, I, I found um, the U.S. statement by uh, the spokesperson for the U.S. National Security Council quite telling. Um, not only did he not provide any evidence, um, but you either believe him, and if you don't believe him, you have to believe that a senior U.S. official is greenlighting 
an Israeli attack on a Palestinian medical facility that could well result in the killing of U.S. citizens uh, who are allegedly being held there as hostages. So it simply um, doesn't make sense. I think I'm speculating, but I suspect um, that the Americans are basically throwing their support behind this horrific Israeli attack and perhaps um, in exchange are seeking Israeli approval uh, for a temporary uh, ceasefire that would involve some kind of prisoner exchange between the Palestinians and the Israelis. As far as the Israelis themselves are concerned, once again, you know, they've given Al Shifa Hospital this extraordinary... But I think we also need to recognize that the really offensive has been to make the Gaza Strip unfit for human habitation. And by attacking yeah. civilian infrastructure and so on, um, that's important to achieving that objective, I believe. Mr. Rabani, I want to refer now to something that the Israeli military have said in their, in their statement, which is something, language, that they often use when talking about their attacks in the Palestinian territories. They talk about um, precise and targeted attacks, that they're going to carry out an operation in a specific area, they say, using precise, using targeted attacks. But if you look at what's happened in Gaza over the past month, since October 7th, the wide-scale destruction, the more than 11,000 civilians who have died, what do you make of the use of these words, the continued use of these words? Well, with all due respect, um, I, I disagree with you because I do believe the attacks Israel has been conducting over the past month have been precise and have been targeted. I think um, what the Israelis aren't telling us is that they've been precise and targeted at an entire society and at an entire civilian uh, population. But in, in some ways, they have said that, haven't they? We have the most senior Israeli politicians who have said yeah. that all of all everyone in gaza is guilty yes and they've made absolutely clear that they will make no distinction whatsoever uh between um combatants and uh the civilian population they've referred to uh the popular the palestinians of the gaza strip as human animals dehumanize them in all kinds of ways denounce them as as nazis and isis and so on not only hamas but the entire population. And so I do believe that this is a campaign that is precise and that is targeted, but not against armed militants, rather against an entire society. Mr. Rabani, we thank you very much for your analysis on this. That is Muin Rabani joining us live from Montreal. Thank you.